Hello, my name is David Kersley, a certified SolidWorks application engineer with GoEngineer. In this video, we will create a golf ball using some previously used methods like planes, creating axes with planes and circular patterns. In this case, to get our hexagonal pattern properly revolved around the perimeter of the golf ball, we will use split line, offset surface, and thicken cut. So I got this golf ball here. This is what the completed golf ball is going to look like. And again, using multi-body construction, got a multi-body part. I got an inner core, I got a layer, another layer, and I kind of got my outer layer here. So this is a four-piece golf ball, uh, brand agnostic. Nope. Uh, uh, so what we did here and how I got here was uh, using a couple cool little methods, and I thought maybe this would help you guys out uh, uh, creating some, some unique designs. So I started out, again, I took a, a profile. I swept a revolve profile around this axis. Uh, the next thing I did is I took that original sketch, I'm going to turn on sketch two here, and if we edit it, we can see that what I did was I did a pattern, and I created each one of these at 10 degrees, and I'm going to create a plane at the end point of these, and the next step was to create planes at the end of these lines, and to do that, again, just a reference, uh, we'll go back to reference geometry, click plane, and my first reference would be, say, this line here, and then if I pick the second reference, I pick this end point, what it does is it creates a plane perpendicular to this line. And we've got it selected over here as perpendicular. And now I can sketch on each one of these planes. So I created a series of planes at each one of these. At um, If I expand my folder out, I created a folder and put them all under degrees, uh, degree planes. And I've got a, one at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees. And I can turn them off, turn them on. I'm going to turn these three off. And if I start to turn these on, you can see how they're created all the way around the perimeter. And I'm using these planes to create a sketch. And I'm going to create a sketch on this plane, and I'm going to do a split line. I'm going to do a split line project. And what I did here was, uh, let's create this top hexagonal pattern. And the way I did that was, uh, underneath the under split line, you'll notice that there's sketch. And I did a sketch, and I created my sketch. And this is the dimple here is uh, uh, 3.5 across. And I'm going to do a split line, and I'm going to project it onto this surface here. And when I do, uh, let's roll this back just a little bit so we can kind of see how this is going to be created. I've got surface one, and I've got surface two. I've got two separate split surfaces here. And what I need to do is I need to create a surface here because I can't do anything really with this. If I try and do uh, like an extrude cut, I can't really do anything with it. But what I can do is I can right-click on this guy or pick on that guy, pick on that sketch, and using my S key, I can do things like create some surface. So I, my shortcut key is my S key, and I, I, I do things like uh, offset surface, things of that nature. So I've got offset surface tagged right here in my shortcut menu. So if I want to hit offset surface, it's going to say, what's my parameter? And I'm going to pick this guy, and I'm going to set it to zero. So I did an offset surface to zero, and that's what this one is, offset surface two. And then what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to, to create a, a cut with this guy. And it surfaces under your tab here at the top. Click on this tab. You'll notice that there's a little icon right here called Thickened Cut. It's kind of an oxymoron, right? You're, you're thickening and you're cutting. Uh, but anyway, I did Thickened Cut, and I renamed it Hex Top. And I said to this, uh, I want to do this one at 0 0.4 millimeters deep. And that's just measuring some different golf ball designs. Some of them are 0.4, some of them are 0.3, some are 0.2. So I set this one at 0.4. And for sure, if, if, if every one of these dimples was at the exact same depth, one thing that we could have done is we kind of kind of referenced some circular patterns and just cut all of them to the same depth. But they're not all at the same depth, and that has to do with the way they want the golf ball to fly in the air. So these dimples are not all the same size, and they're not all the same depth. And so one way I can control that is doing this thickened cut. And each one of these, depending on the dimple size, so, may be deeper or shallower. So I created one, and then I went to my 10-degree plane, and I created the next one. And let's look at that feature. This was, again, was a large dimple or a hex pattern. So I created that one at 0.4 deep. And I just started creating these guys. 
all the way down. Let's see if we can find one of the medium ones. There's a medium one. And if we look at this guy, this one's only 030 deep. And if we look at the sketch on this guy, again, it was just creating the same thing. So edit sketch, and we look at this one. This one's three millimeters across. So again, created a pattern, much like we did in the previous uh, lesson where we used circular patterns. I created all nine of my hex patterns. And depending on the size and, and their location, I'll go back here and turn this original sketch off. Again, click on it. It's turned gray. It's turned off. The next thing I wanted to do was create my circular patterns. And uh, so to do that, I revolved them around this axis. And I, I created this axis between two planes. Again, simply uh, features, reference geometry axis. And over here on the left side, it says between two planes. And I picked my front plane and my right plane. This is my vertical. And I'm just going to revolve these guys ar around that axis. Um, so, and then I put them into a folder. And there's 10, 20. And let's go look at this one. And all I did was I did this dimple pattern around the axis, this axis here. And the features, I did the 30 degree hex and I patterned it around. And you can see that this one's got 18 instances. And again, as the diameter of the, of the ball is changing, as we get all the way up to the equator, it's getting bigger. So we need more and more dimples. And so now I have this part. And that gives me half of it. And then all I have to do is do my mirroring. And I end up with a completed golf ball. So I hope this helps you uh, out. Um, next time you have a, a rather complex shape and you need to project it onto a curve and you need to cut with that curve. And, and the cool part about it is, you know, if you look at it, we do a section view. Let's zoom in here. And one of the reasons I did that was you'll notice that it basically maintained the, the circular profile of the outside of the ball. And it's a perfect dimple cut and it followed it perfectly. And that's, that's one of the reasons I did that. So, uh, I hope this helps you out next time you get to do uh, some cuts or something unique on a, on a curved surface. Hopefully you'll think about using things like split line, uh, offset surface of zero, and then using a thickened cut uh, uh, from that uh, uh, original surface. This has been David Kersley with Go Engineer. I hope you found this SolidWorks tutorial helpful. Please check out our Go Engineer uh, YouTube library or visit our website to enroll in classes near you at goengineer.com.